Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my June wrap up part one. I'm filming this bang on halfway through the month for a change. It is the 15th as I'm filming this, I think. Yep, it is the 15th. No, it's the 16th. Oh, I'm being a bit naughty. I'm doing a day late. Ooh. Anyway, I'm filming it halfway through the month and guess what guys? I have already read 18 books this month so far and I am well happy with that. So I thought that 17 of my unread TBR, I've already unhauled four of my unread TBR. So at the moment on day one, I'm going down already for my unread TBR. Yes, and I'm going to the shop tomorrow. So, you know, who knows, but I'm going working my way. Anyway, so, so far this month's going all right. It's not as good as last month because although I've got quite a few five stars, they're either rereads or part of the series. So, not as good as last month, but it's still going well. Um, I have got three books that I'm currently reading at the moment. They're all body reads because the day that I'm filming this, I'm starting two new books. I am film starting one that's not on my TBR, but on my set TBR, but it's one I really wanted. But the other two I'm starting. Yeah, because I've read most of my own TBR already. Most of my books that are on my TBR video, I've read. So I'm saving, I think, like two or three. So you'll hear about them in the next part. Anyway, I'm rambling again. So the first one I'm bloody reading is The Plays of Oscar Wilde. I have read one of the plays before today, which I read. Da -da -da, what is it? I know I loved it. I think it is the important... No, Lady Wyndham is a fan. I read that last week and loved it. And that was like five stars that that one alone today as of the day i'm filming this straight after filming i'm going to be reading a woman of no importance yeah really looking forward to reading that i'm buddy reading this with alice so we're reading a play a week so this week is going to be the woman of no importance next week i'm going to be reading the an ideal husband and then in the last week of the month i'll be reading the importance of being earnest Week one's going really well. I was going to read the other play at the start of the week, but we've had some a lot of stress happening down this end at the moment. It's been a really tough ride. I'm also buddy reading with the lovely, the lovely Gem from Gem of Books. I'm buddy reading Far From The Madding Crowd. We're reading about three chapters a day and then catching up every third day. So loving this. I'm really, really enjoying this. This is just actually what I need. This is more than most of what I need because it's bloody, bloody brilliant. I have time my buddy reads right because that's brilliant and that's potentially one of my favorite classics already this this book is the book that i've got a potential of being my favorite of the month and going in my favorites of the year i'm technically buddy reading it with danny from danny's book well but that's not exactly happening because she's not really reading at the moment but i love danny anyway and this is mrs england by stacy halls now obviously you guys know the familiars was one of my favorite books of a few years ago i love the foundling this has got potential, like I said, to be a favourite. It is five stars all the way. I've got... So I technically should be finishing it on Saturday. I'm about halfway through. I bloody love it. It's 50 pages a day and it's historical fiction at its best. It is bloody amazing. It's set in West Yorkshire, 1904, and it is amazing. It's thrilling, it's exciting, it's historical, it's brilliant. Stacey Halls does not disappoint. I, some people have loved this. And some people haven't. I thoroughly love it. It's five stars all the way. It's just amazeballs. So that is definitely going to be a five star. So I've got three books that are three stars, two that are three and a half, five that are four stars, two that are four and a half, and then six that are five stars. So technically, it's going really well. Excuse the hay fever, guys. So the first one that's three stars is a book I wanted to get off my shelves. It was one. I've had for, for a while it was 20p one at the charity shop and it was a nurse at war and this is okay it's historical fiction it's an okay one it's set just before world war one lily knowles is desperate to leave home at 21 she escapes london to train as a nurse oh, sorry where she gathers many admirers none more dashing than raf sandy redfern who she falls in love with and then something happens and it's just it's her their journey it's all right but nothing special so that is a no keepy. Then we've got my buddy read with Gem from Gem, Gemma from Reader Book Gem. Um, and I am still debating. I'm putting this in the three stars, but I'm not sure if it's three or three and a half. It's basically three different storylines. 
um, three different versions of a life that could have happened. So it's like sliding doors mixed with one day. And version three I liked, version two was all right, version one was meh. And they all sort of weave together a bit, but I found myself getting lost quite a bit. It was a lot harder work to read this than I expected it to be, so it's a meh unhaul. Then we're on to the three and a half star. Three and a half star. Oh, I've got a book. Aha! There is a book that's inside because I forgot to bring it out here. The book that I've just finished, and that is called The Schoolgate Survival Kit by Kerry something or another. I cannot remember the name of it. But it is good. It was one I finished last night. Um, it was contemporary about the school gates at the moment that's a bit too um close to home but it's very it's basically about a girl girl who is quite living on a state and now is has an opportunity to send her schools to kids to a posh school and how they work at the posh school and posh school gates like mums and stuff like that but there is some domestic abuse in there so there is the trigger of domestic abuse and there is a lot of bullying and i found it very hard hitting and yeah a bit of a struggle on that one sorry a bit of class a bit of domestic violence the storyline's got some bits where it's funny, but it's not the funny book that I wanted it to be, so. Okay, so now we're on to our three, two and a half stars. I finished it! I finished the mirror and the flipping light. It is finally off my shelves, or not off my shelves, so I'm keeping it to reread at another point, but it's off the unread TBR, it's gone, it's gone, bye bye. Unfortunately, the read-along with this has not gone quite as well because not many people wanted to commit as much to this because it is the one of the biggest books that I've read and I think it is like 873 pages. I read it over three months, but it was bloody hard-hitting. At some point, me and the co-host will talk about it or me and um, Tori from Half Puff Discovery will talk about it because Marissa didn't want to read this. A lot of people aren't committing to this because it is too much of a big book. I don't blame them. It's the third in the series and probably my least favourite in the series. Um, yes, it ties everything together nicely at the end. I'm not going to go into too much details, but if you do want to know, please feel free to let me know. Chunky book. Be glad to get it off my shelves. Now on to my... Sorry about this. My hay fever is really playing up. Four star books. The first one is the next in our analog, which is another series, another read along that's slogging. I don't know how many people are actually going to read this this month. This is more about Anne and her children. I'm not gonna, I can't talk about it because it's so far into the series. It's like book five or six in the series. No, it's book six in the series. What, seven and eight to read yet? But it's about Anne and her children. And I can't go into too much detail. It's good, it's cozy. It really does focus on Anne and her children in this. And that is good, it's not about other people. Uh, but yeah. I'm not sure about whether this is four stars or now that I'm getting further into the series, it could be lower. But that is a keepy. Then we've got on to one of my summer books, and this was really good fun. It's my first Jill Mansell. It's four stars, but it could be four and a half. It was a really fun, no, it's four, it definitely is four. It's a fun contemporary, my first Jill Mansell, and not my last. I plan to pick up some more of hers at my charity shop. But the book really is what it starts off with. It starts off with a secret, and the lead character, Lainey, that says a secret to get a job that she wants and how that goes and she gets into this big family and their little lives how it all intervenes really good fun contemporary then we've got a thriller of my first thriller of the month the girls by lisa jewel this is very very good fun it's an easy fly through contemporary thriller that i flew through you live on a communal garden square where your children run free You've known your neighbours for years and you trust them implicitly. You think your children are safe, but are they? Exciting, fun, loved it. She does not disappoint. Her thrillers are amazing. Then we went for another Jojo Moyes. And this is Silver Bay. This is a very cosy contemporary. It's four stars, but it's about a girl, lady, Liza McCullen, who can't escape her past. But the unspoilt beaches and tight-knit community of some Silver Bay offer her the freedom and safety she craves if not for herself, then for her daughter Hannah, until Mike Dormer arrives as a guest at her aunt's gift house, aunt's house, hotel, and the piece of Silver Bay is shattered. This is fun, and there is a twist in it, and again, you have got to watch out for domestic abuse that's in this, and there are some triggers, so be one going into this, but it is a really good, it's exciting, 
very easy to read. Not her best, but not her worst. And then we've got, oh, this is wobbling. We've got a Nightingale Silver, Nightingale Christmas Wish, which was a fun, it's, this is like the fourth or fifth in the series. I think it's fifth in the series. So again, I can't talk about it because it's so far up the series. But um, this is about Sister Blake is revisited from a place from her past. Will buried secrets stop her from being happy? And we focus on Helen Dawson and her new responsibilities and trials. But is she looking for love in the wrong places? She's really good. Really enjoyed it. Loved it. And then lastly, a book that I randomly got off my shelves because it was on the top shelf. This is a fantasy and a lot of people have rated it higher than me. Um, I, It's fantasy but contemporary. I'm counting it as a fantasy but it is a contemporary as well. Foresight is not always a gift and this is about a girl who foresees the future. And she has troubles with that. It causes no end of problems. But I turned 15 that summer, which I never believed to be significant. Although afterwards, people claimed it quite feminine that it was. It's all right. Quite good. But the one I'm going to keep, and I'm just thinking, actually, these pile needs to be done because I've got a load of keepies now. So I'm on my five star books that are keepies. Most of them are keepies. Or actually, I'm on four and a half stars. So click over the page on my planner because even though I know it anyway, this first one you would have seen on my Try Chapter tag, The Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley. I forgot that it was Pride Month this month, so I didn't set put books on my prop month, buy book shelf for Pride Month, but I have got another couple that are going to be Pride Month related, LGBTQI plus related, and this was brilliant. This was, oh, because it really mixes historical fiction because we're tackling the 19, sort of 1959 and it's the battle of the civil rights is raging. It's Sarah's first day at school as one of the first black students. No one wants Sarah there, especially not Linda, the daughter of the town's most ardent segregationist. Linda and Sarah are supposed to despise each other, but the more time they spend each other, the more they fall in love. Brilliant. I'm giving this to Mia. I think she'll love that. I'm, sa I'm saving it for Mia. I think she. I think that would be really good for her because it will teach her about historical fiction. But OGTQ. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, people's killing me. Um, but yeah, she'll love that. So I'm going to save that for her. And then we've got the last book that I won't be keeping because I'm going to give, but I'm going to give it to my mum. And this is The Summer Seekers by Sarah Morgan. This is one of my favourite Sarah Morgan books because it has got a great older protagonist, Kathleen. She's 80 years old and she wants to go on an adventure. And she ends up going on it with a girl, lady called Martha, who is in her mid sort of twenties, I think. She's having a quarter life crisis, unemployed, unloved and uninspired, but she just can't get her life together. She knows something must change. So she goes on the journey, the Summer Seekers journey with Kathleen. And then you've got Kathleen's daughter, Liza, who's drowning under, under a daily stress of family life. And the last thing she needs is her mother jetting off on a wild holiday, making Liza dry, dream of a solid break of her own. There are some things in this that hit home to me as a mum and I could really relate to her because as a mum, we sometimes lose ourselves. We always find ourselves rushing around after our kids and she just goes off and takes a break and something I'd love to do at some point. And her journey with my mum, like she always tried to get close to her mum because her mum kept her arm sense for a long time. And when she goes off on this break, she discovers a lot more about her mum than she did do. And they become closer. It's brilliant. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. So now for my five stars. We've got the next one in the Percy Jackson series, which I loved. It's the third in the series. And it is absolutely bloody brilliant. Again, I can't talk too much about it because it is so far in the series. But they are going off on a journey and she and he goes on the great adventures and I loved it. I buddy read it with Gaia. Thoroughly loved it. Flew through it. It's just one of the most fun books ever. I love this Percy Jackson series. It's great fun. I'm actually seriously considering keeping it. I don't keep series very often. But I did love that. The next one was for my page tune buddy read. It's not counting as a reread technically because this is a new copy of it, my new copy of it that was given to me by Danny um, and I loved it. It was a reread because obviously I've read it once before but I loved it. It is a bit close to bone because at the start we obviously have this lady um, who's three when a car crash deals with her mother's life. That's a bit close to the bone because obviously being car crashes. Uh, 30 years down the line, she's trying. The lady who found, found 
as there's a stranger at the scene, is trying to track Amber down. And Amber is a bit of a naughty girl in this because her first love comes into it and she's still married. But you discover why she goes back to her first love a bit further in and there are some dramas. But she is a naughty girl and I found that a bit hard because cheating is not acceptable in any which way. But it's written well because it explains why she does this and why she revisits the past. It's really good. Still five stars. I can't put this... Oh, this is like amazing. This is the Catherine of Aragon. I finished the first book in our Tudor log and I loved it. Last time I rated it four stars. This time I rated it five. It's brilliant. It's fun. I flew through it. I loved it. I loved Catherine of Aragon. She's my second favourite of the Queen's. She, to me, was Kath Henry's really true love. The one true love. Everyone else after her, I don't think he really, really loved. I think he just wanted to quit and head to the throne. And their relationship starts off a bit dodgy because when she meets him, he's like 11 or like really young and she shouldn't find him attractive. And yet yeah, they do and they really do fall in love. And you feel for her as this book goes along because we all know what happened to her. And it's brilliant. But this is very emotional because she does lose quite a lot of children and we know that historically. I'm not telling you anything that's a spoiler. Yeah, I loved this book. I really loved it. Now, the next one was another series book, so I can't tell you too much about it. But it's Summer at the Be Little Beach Street Bakery. I love this. This is the second in the series. I've got to read the third before Christmas, because even though it's a Christmas book, because I want to read the fifth, and I want to read the newest one. And it's just so good. And you see, you see the puffin in this, and you see... Polly's little journey and you fight for Polly because she's such a great character and I love her and I love the story by the sea. I love the Little Beach Street Bakery. I love the talks of food. It always gets me hungry. But I loved it. Now the next one is one of the only Bridget Kemener books I've not read but seeing as her newest one came out this month I wanted to read the first. I've read the second book in this series but I've not read the first. It's only two but two series. But, um, a geology, sorry. And this is Letters to the Lost. Yes, it's a YA, and I'm not a massive YA, although I've read two YA books this month. But it's really good. It's about writing letters to people you've lost and how that affects it. And these people start writing letters to each other and they find out that the people, their parents are not what they thought they were. And it's quite interesting. And Declan Murphy is quite a tough guy and you don't want to cross him. But when she, then he starts writing this letter to this girl, he, you see the different side of him and I love that. I love that you're not always what you appear on the surface. And Juliet Young, again, she's not what she perceives on the surface. And then how they sort of intermingle and it's really good and I really loved it. Yeah, and then lastly, but no means least, my non-fiction for the month, which is The Boy Who Followed His Father to Outreach. This is non-fiction, it's five stars because there's no way I could discredit this writing. But what this boy does, he stays with his dad, even though it means him going into Auschwitz, which was one of the hardest places to go into. And he sacrifices himself for his father. And their bond and their journey together is amazing. And this is a brilliant book. I am not rereading this because it would freaking kill me. But it's a brilliant book. And it's about Auschwitz and the, what the Jews faced at that time and, and how all the other siblings and what happened to them. And there's supposition about exact details about certain things, but it's brilliant and it's hard hitting. Now for my favourite of the month, I forgot to ask you if you could guess it, but I wonder if you did guess correctly anyway. It's got to be Letters to the Lost. See, I, I'm i saying it's Letters to the Lost, but can I really count? Let me know in the comments down below. Can I count that one? Because I read it over two months. Does it still count as a book read? Can it still count as a favourite because I've read it over two months? I don't know. But it's kind of a toil to tear between this and this. Because they're both amazing and I love them both. They're both brilliant favourites and I love them for equally different reasons. Anyway guys, how are you doing this month? Have you got a favourite book of the month so far? Let me know down below. I'd love it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel not subscribed yet, ring on my ding-a-ling. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.